Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 7. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 21 of Book 7. Now, this proposition states that if we have two numbers, a and b, which are relatively prime, and by relatively prime, that means that the greatest common divisor between a and b is equal to 1. So if a and b are relatively prime, then a and b are also the smallest whole numbers that can be used to create the ratio of a to b. So in other words, if there's another two numbers, e and f, which are the ratio, same ratio as a to b, a is less than e and b is less than f. I've written the math here for those people who are interested in it, but let me just state this again so that you understand. A and B are two numbers, and they are the smallest two numbers that can be used to represent the ratio of A to B. So then, again, this proposition states A and B are prime, then A and B are the two smallest numbers used to represent the ratio A and B. So we are going to prove this by using a contradiction. So we start again with A and B being relatively prime, and there's another two numbers, C and D, which are the smallest two numbers that can represent the ratio of A and B. So C is less than A and D is less than B, and C and D are the smallest two numbers that represent this ratio. Now, according to Proposition 20 of this book, if that is the case, then C measures A and D measures B. Now, since A measures, or sorry, since C measures A, let E be the number of times that C measures A. In this particular case, the way I've drawn it, E is equal to 2. Now, since C, C to D is equal to A to B, that also means that D measures B E number of times. So again, E is equal to 2. So E times D is equal to B. According to Proposition 16 of this book, if A is measured by C E number of times, we can inverse this and say that E measures A C number of times. Or in other words, if we look at the math, if A is equal to E times C, A is also equal to C times E. Similarly, we can do the same thing for B, since D measures B E number of times. We can inverse this and say that E measures B D number of times. Or again, B is equal to E times D, so therefore B is equal to D times E. And since we have that A is equal to C, or let me rephrase this properly, since we have that E measures A, and E also measures B, then the greatest common divisor of A and B will be equal to E, and E is not equal to 1. However, we started this whole proof by stating that A and B were equal to 1, so we have a contradiction. And since we have this contradiction, there cannot be a number C and D that is the same ratio of A to B, where A is less than C and B is less than D. So C and D do not exist. Therefore, we have shown that A and B are the smallest two numbers that can be used to represent the ratio of A to B. And there are no other smaller numbers that can be the same ratio.